Good evening, Mr. Bond fans. You better fasten your safety belts, because we're back on the old videos again. I want to start this off by thanking everyone who commented so positively on the previous, um, reacting to my old video, video that I made. The, the YouTube snake is truly eating its own tail here. But I had an awful lot of fun making that video. Like I said, it's kind of like a therapy for me, particularly when it comes to a film like License to Kill, like last time, which is the film that my opinion has changed on so much over the years. It's interesting to go back and have a little time capsule of, you know, what your former opinions used to be on something. And there were lots of really nice, kind, positive comments on that video, so thank you for the, the, the group therapy session, it's been really good. But people were asking if I was gonna do any more in that same style looking at my older videos. And I thought an interesting one to go back and look at would be Thunderball. Less so, because this is not a film like License to Kill where my opinion has drastically changed over time. Thunderball is still a, dare I say, bottom five Bond film for me, despite Daniel Craig's best intentions to completely monopolize that category. But this video, when it was first uploaded way back when, when I was just starting up, when I was a budding YouTuber back in, back in my university days, this was the first video that ever did anything like, you know, <laughs> numbers wise when it came to YouTube views. And I think a good deal of those numbers were for the wrong reason, because this was the first video that I was going around on the Bond messaging boards and kind of being deliberately quite petulant about, I, I, at that time anyway, Thunderball for me was a film that I'd only ever heard people rave about that I didn't like very much. And I feel like the tide has turned <laughs> on, on, on that opinion. I do know that there are a lot of people who share that similar opinion as me, but growing up as a young Bond fan, all the books that I read would talk about Thunderball as this revered thing on the same level as Goldfinger. Goldfinger, a film that I love very much. So this was, for me at that time, some kind of catharsis to let out all of these uh, opinions that I'd built up over, at that point, I guess, over 10 years. And I remember getting a lot of angry comments on it. I remember it had an awful lot of dislikes. Oh god, no, it actually, I tell you, it wasn't even likes and dislikes uh, on YouTube back then. They had the star system where you could rate a video between one and five stars. I, I must have got a lot of one stars because it was a very low rating. So I'm interested to come back and see if, if I really am terribly petulant in this particular video, if people were right to be <laughs> rating it down and talking it down at that time. Probably, but as I've said before in other videos, particularly when you're starting up on YouTube, back then anyway, when YouTube was still quite fresh and new and everyone was still sort of figuring it out, it you know, you, you you were encouraged to have the most outrageous view and the most um, explosive uh, opinions and commentary, whether or not that was true to yourself. Before we get going with this, I should just give a friendly uh, warning about language as well. If you're familiar with any of these other older videos, uh, there might be some strong language involved. Consider yourself warned. Holy shit. Oh God, just opened up the video file and it's just me looking really pissed off like the first frame. I, I have a feeling that this is gonna be kind of rough, so um, as I say, I don't feel like my opinions on the film has have changed all that much, but uh, I, I have a feeling that my younger self is gonna be much more petulant about expressing his opinions, so here we go, folks. Alright, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I fucking hate Thunderball. I think it's one of the worst entries in the Bond film canon. I think it's fucking boring and shit. But yet, yeah, here we are. I'm gonna look at it and tell you why I think it's so shit, and then you can disagree with me. Oh, God, shudder. <laughs> yep, fairly sweary. Oh, dear. Lord. The film opens with the first gun barrel sequence to actually feature Sean Connery due to the new widescreen ratio. Oh, very wide. Hmm. <laughs> the film then opens on James Bond's funeral. Oh no, it doesn't. James Bond is alive and well, attending the funeral of Spectre agent Colonel Jack Bavar, who murdered two Jack. MI6 agents. Jack Calvin. But Bond notices something fishy about the Colonel's widow and goes to investigate. I've uh, come to offer my sincere condolences. <laughs> Jesus, the violence towards women in these films just escalates. My dear Colonel Bavard, I don't think you should have opened that car door by yourself. 
Yes, as it's clearly inconceivable that a woman would open a car door by herself, Bond discovers Bouvard is not actually dead, but a transvestite. Oh, well he is dead now. Bond then escapes by a jetpack. Well, this is Bond, anything's possible. And then makes his getaway in the good old Aston Martin DB5. It's never quite explained how Bond gets his Aston Martin back after crashing it at Auric Enterprises in the previous film. But we can presume that Q Branch just has these things on a conveyor belt. We then get a typically Bondian opening title sequence by Morris Binder. It's saying something when I find the opening titles to be the most exciting thing in the film. It's also in the credits that we see that the underwater sequences were directed by Rico Browning, who was the creature from the Black Lagoon in The Creature from the Black Lagoon. We see Terence Young returning to direct, and we also see that the film is produced by someone who isn't Broccoli or Saltzman, Kevin McClory. This was due to a big legal thing which I'll go to the effort of explaining in another video. The film proper follows the credits and we're introduced to our main villain, Emilio Largo, and see that he is a member of Spectre, a faceless Blofeld back once again. We then cut to James Bond relaxing at a health spa. While receiving a massage from token sexy doctor woman Patricia Fearing, Bond notices Count Leapy, a suspicious man Leapy. with a criminal tattoo. Bond Lippy. proceeds to search no. Leapy's room, Lippy. but he's seen by Leapy's bandaged neighbour, who later tries to murder Bond with a spinal traction machine, but only after Bond attempts molesting Patricia Fearing. Attempts molesting? Also, I'm surprised that I didn't show any clips of the spinal <laughs> therapy machine, whatever that is. Oh no, I do. Okay, here we are. <laughs> I really need to rewatch this film again sometime soon. I haven't seen it in a couple Fortunately, of years. Fortunately, the now. murder attempt is foiled by fearing. Uh, somebody's gonna wish the day had never happened. Well, you wouldn't tell Dr. Wayne. Please, I'd lose my job. Well, I. I suppose my silence could have a price. Don't mean. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. So Bond molests the Doctor and then blackmails her into sex despite her saving his life. That's our hero right there. <laughs> it's then that we are introduced so to Fiona Volpe, along with the plot, in the form of Francois Duval, a French NATO pilot, deployed to fly aboard a jet loaded with two atomic bombs for a training mission that night. Fiona receives a call from Count Leapy, so we immediately know she is in on the Spectre plot. Duval answers the door to a figure of himself and is then killed by a poisonous gas. The new Duval really needs to move away from the microphone when speaking. You can just hear the popping. Surgery ...to make himself look exactly like Duval in order to take his place and steal the bombs. Oh, those damned aeroplanes. They're enough to drive you mad. Who thought it was a bright idea to put a health spa next to a military airbase? Spectre then placed the dead Duval back in the health spa to make it look as if he died of a heart attack. After an intimate night with fearing, Bond goes snooping again and finds a dead man wrapped in bandages. The man is Francois Duval. What's happening? What's going on? I don't know. Could it be the front doorbell? No, it most certainly could not. Uh. Good God, the man's a sex maniac. <laughs> Meanwhile... Angelo takes Duval's place on the plane, gasses the rest of the crew, and sinks the plane near the Bahamas so Largo and his men can come and retrieve the bombs. In a scene that is so overly long and dull it goes beyond the point of tedium. Angelo is left to drown after demanding a higher payment from Spectre. Th this theft summons all active 00 agents to Whitehall. En route, Bond is followed by Leapy, who is killed by Fiona, allegedly because he failed to foresee Angelo demanding more money. I rank this very highly on my list of pointless reasons to kill people. <laughs> well, now that we're all here... It's pretty cool to see Bond debriefed in a giant conference room with eight of the double-O agents. It really makes this situation feel like a real threat. At the meeting, Bond recognises a photo of Duval as the corpse he had seen at the health spa. Bond requests M sends him to the Bahamas to meet Duval's sister, Domino. As Bond is leaving M's office, this happens. 
smashing figure. Oh, the hat thing. Has anything to do with your request. <laughs> it's bothered me forever, this thing. Now, James, you can't pull the wool over my eyes. You may be able to con the old man, but I know better. I can... So do I, Miss Moneypenny. Liberal use of clips. Now, thank you not to refer to me as the old man. I think I had a hat when I came in. Is that, is that meant to be a joke? If it is, it's downright Python-esque. I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, I genuinely don't understand. We saw Bond hang up his hat when he came in. What, did someone steal his hat? Why does someone question this? Doesn't Bond wonder where it is? Did Q steal it as revenge for destroying all his gadgets? Did Moneypenny take it to add to her 007 shrine? What the hell? I love that even when, like, this was back in a time where YouTube videos had to be 15 minutes or less. You could not go over 15 minutes. <laughs> I chose to spend a bit, a big chunk of this. I'm, I'm completely breezing over big plot details, but no, the hat thing needs some, need, needs a full-on aside. <laughs> it still bothers me, though. Bond goes out to sea to find Domino. This film's very underwhelming, Domino. Bond girl. She's Northern beautiful and everything, accent. but she just comes off as sort of Honey Rider light. I mean, she even collects shells and swims in the ocean. The two end up having lunch and dancing together later that night, after Bond beats Largo at cards. We're also introduced to another Bond girl with Paula, played by Martine Beswick, who also played one of the pointless fighting gypsies in From Russia With Love. Bond returns to his hotel room to see one of Largo's henchmen. Bond disarms the henchman and sends him back to report to his superiors. It's also here that we once again meet Felix Leiter, played here by Rick Van Nutter, the Nutter. third actor to play the part. Bond and Felix go into town and meet Paula and a guy called Pinder? Arr, too many characters! Why don't you actually try developing some of the characters you've already introduced and make them more interesting instead of just throwing them all at us? It's the same with the villains, there are too many villains in this film. The Vargas and that guy with the glasses, what's his name again? We haven't even seen Fiona Volpe since the motorbike incident. Where the fuck is she? Oh. <laughs> Relatively uh, bad language free for most of this. So it's surprising when it, it just sure. Thank jumps you. you like that. You've just about saved my life. <laughs> oh, there she is. The sweep hand takes the radioactivity count. It's waterproof, of course. But of course. The Bond Q scene is absolutely terrible in this film. It feels like a caricature of a Bond Q scene. It feels like a ten-year-old wrote it. But it's nice to actually see Desmond Llewellyn be a bit more relaxed in the role. Paula is kidnapped and tortured for information. Bond attempts a rescue, but Paula kills herself before he gets there. And Paula becomes a sacrificial lamb, thus highlighting the utter pointlessness of her character. Just an excuse to get another girl in the film so that they could send her around the world and do a bit of publicity. Bond publicity. is then kidnapped by Fiona, but escapes and is chased through a junk canoe celebration before attempting to hide at a bar, the Kiss Kiss Club. This scene is probably my favourite scene in the film, even if it does kill off the best character in the movie, Fiona Volpe. It's a very tense Volpe. scene, and there's a great punchline to Volpe getting killed. One of my friend's sisters one out. She's just dead. Bond and Felix go searching for the sunken jet and eventually find it, along with the corpse of Angelo. Bond goes to meet Domino at a regular scuba diving zone. <laughs> Really, really, really let the clips run in some of these videos, despite the lack of, you know, YouTube running time at that time. <laughs> so. I'd like to see how that sex scene would work, considering all the scuba gear and goggles and such. Still, it's lovely of Bond to shag the girl before he tells her her brother is dead, isn't it? Bond then asks for Domino's help in finding the atomic bombs, killing Vargas in the meantime. She agrees, and Bond gives her a Geiger counter to look for the bombs with, while he disguises himself as one of Largo's henchmen. Largo finds out about Domino and locks her in a room on his ship. Bond then uncovers Largo's plan to detonate the bombs in Miami Beach unless Spectra paid £100 million. Bond's cover is blown by Largo, but he escapes and is rescued by Lighter, who then orders a unit of United States Coast Guard sailors to parachute to the area for an underwater battle against Spectre. Believe me, this sounds more interesting than it actually is. Of course, Bond goes in to join the battle. And the kitchen sink. I knew everything looks good. Is that Felix flirting with Bond? 
the underwater battle leaves a lot to be desired. I guess just, it's just dropping due that to the fact that everything there. takes place underwater, which means everything moves very, very slowly. Other than Largo and Bond, everyone else down there is faceless and random, so we don't really care about them. Do punches underwater even have that kind of effect? <laughs> oh? Oh, apparently so. Now, if the creature from the Black Lagoon turned up, that random. would make this scene exciting. Just a random clip from Tomb Raider there. Oh, uh, well, we have some clips play out. You know what? This hasn't be actually been as petulant and awful as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be really gratuitously uh, negative and mean-spirited, but I, I don't think it's been too too much of that. I feel like, you know, some of the criticisms that I have back then, I probably still have Margo today, manages to, to escape honest. the fight and boards his boat, the Disco Volante, which still has one atomic bomb on board. Bond 2 sneaks aboard and a fight breaks out. Meanwhile, Domino is freed by the villain with the glasses whose name I can't remember, who seems to have a bit of a deus ex machina change of character. Margo gains the upper hand in the fight with Bond, but he's killed with a harpoon gun by Domino. Nice touch. I have a feeling, though, th the the language will probably escalate as I get to the wrap up in a in a few in about a minute or something, if the previous videos are anything to go by. Who's he? I don't know. I don't know who he is either. Please explain. With the Disco Volante heading towards certain doom, Bond, Domino, and person jump into the ocean. You know, I still don't remember that guy's name. That scientist guy. It's not Vlad or. Is it something beginning with V? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> the Disco Volante explodes and Bond and Domino are picked up and flown away on a winch. Okay. Coming into the wrap-up now, people, so be prepared for some strong language. The guy with the glasses is never likely. seen or heard from again. He claimed not to be able to swim, so presumably he drowned or got eaten by a shark. It was his change of character that saved America from an atomic bomb, so really he's the hero here. But what the hell? Screw him. No one gets in the way of Bond's shagging. I mean, so yeah, untrue. as you probably gathered, I'm not much of a Thunderball fan. Though perhaps I do exaggerate my dislike for it a bit too much. After all, no Bond film is unwatchable. The film has its good points. As mentioned previously, I'm quite a fan of Fiona Volpe and would go as far to say that she's Bond. one of my favourite Bond villains of all time. Luciana Palooza plays her brilliantly, Palooza. and I like how she acts as something of a counter to the likes of Tanya and Pussy, bad girls who were eventually won over by Bond's charm. There are a few scenes that I like, admittedly mostly just anything with Fiona in it, and one can't deny that the massive scope and scale of the film is impressive, and this is largely down to the amazing set design by Ken Adam. However, the film's Praise. negatives vastly outweigh its positives. Oh. Most of the action sequences feel forced and crowbarred in. The same can be said for many of the characters, Paula, Pinder, and Vargas, for example. All are really pointless additions to the Bond team, and they just come off as being lifeless and dull. Largo is a very boring villain, and Domino an equally boring Bond girl. Though I don't think this is down to the actors. Both Adolfo Celli and Claudine Auger play their parts well, but rather the script doesn't do much to make them more colourful, rounded characters. The underwater sequences are very well photographed, and Rico Browning does a good job with a lot of the underwater direction. However, everything moves so damn slowly, it's difficult to get excited about any of the action that goes on. Thunderball has gone on to be the most successful Bond film of all time when accounting for inflation. I've heard a lot of people attest this to its supposed brilliance. To that I say, fuck off. Goldfinger was the reason people wouldn't see Thunderball, because people were expecting and hoping for a film as amazing as that. I guess you could say similar things about Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace. But yeah, I'm just not a fan. I'd definitely rank this as the worst Connery Bond film, and it's probably my bottom three of Bond films overall, if not right at the bottom. But I don't know, I'll have to make that evaluation after I see License to Kill again. Of course, the film's massive box office success ensured that there would be many more Bond films to come. And indeed, James Bond will return in Connery's first James Bond swan song, You Only Live Twice. Well, that was unexpectedly positive at the end. Like I say, I have real memories of that video in particular being very uh, petulant and attracted a lot of kind of comments and stuff. And watching it now, I'm kind of like, oh, it, it's not that bad. I feel like I might have been a bit more negative about some of the things that I didn't like in my old License to Kill review, to be perfectly honest. I didn't think the swearing was quite so bad in that one either. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm just softening now after this is my third 
time doing this reacting to an old video thing and maybe I'm just becoming desensitized to my younger self because I didn't cringe through that as much as I thought I would. Um, if anything, I think I had a bit of a harder time watching the License to Kill video. And now it's given me a bit of a hankering to rewatch Thunderball. It's not one of the ones that I go to all that often, so I might well have to dig it out sometime soon. I remember that one of the last times that I watched it, I really uh, connected with the travel log aspect of it more than anything else. I think I think it was because it was in 2020 when we were all in lockdown, so just all of the scenery and visuals really appealed to me. And now that we're coming into winter again, it's <laughs> the, 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 the appeal is uh, growing once again. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comments section below on Thunderball and on that older video. Were you around when that video was first uploaded? Were you one of the people that gave it a one star rating on YouTube? Please let me know in the comments below and I won't hold it against you. I would give it a one star review if I were rating it now. And if you have not already subscribed to this channel, please do consider scrolling below and clicking that button as well as the Mrs. Bell notification button to stay super up to date on future video uploads that I make on this channel. There's a variety of links below to my other social medias. And with all that being said, and until next time, Bond fans, so long for now.